الحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی وصحب وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله We must give good glad tidings to the strangers as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said. And in an <clears throat> authentic narration on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Muslim reported in the Sahih from the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said, Islam began as something strange and it will return to being strange as it began. So tubu ila to the strangers. Give glad tidings to the strangers. Imam Ahmed and Ibn Majah have also reported this hadith <laughs> on the authority of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu with the addition at the end it was said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and who are the strangers? He sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, the nuz'ah, those who extract themselves from their families and their relatives. Imam Abu Bakr al-Juri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, he transmitted it and in his report there occurs, it was said, who are they, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, those who rectify themselves and others when the people have come be become a corrupt. Ahabatifillah, this is this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has immense uh, benefits and fawa'id. This hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shows us that Islam, as we know and understand it, it began strange. It was a strange call. The Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam was calling people to the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uncompromisingly. And these were people who were mushriks, people who worshipped uh, all kind of idols and gods and set up intercessors with Allah Azza wa Jal. And here came a man, an unlettered prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who couldn't read and couldn't write, who was claiming that the people should come back to the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal as the Prophet Alayhim Afdal Salatu Wasallam before him came with this message. And the people were resistant, and they thought it was strange, and it was gharib, and it was a threat to their authority, to their social structure, to everything, because they had built so much and based their societies on worshipping those idols. So it began as something strange. The da'wah began, and people began to come to Islam, who later became Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. So what about now? Islam has been established. Basic knowledge of Islam is widespread around the world. And with that being said, there is still so much strangeness. And the reason there is so much strangeness is because so many people have departed from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So many communities have departed from the pristine sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and embraced bid'ah. So then from those practices, sunnah has become bid'ah and bid'ah has become sunnah. The people who say la ilaha illallah, they say wa shadowin la ilaha illallah, wa shadowin Muhammad Rasulullah, they bear witness to the testimony of faith. At the same time, they actually go to the graves and asks, and ask those inhabitants of the grave, meaning the dead, who can't do anything for themselves. And at the same time, there are those who circumambulate around the graves, and they bear the test, they say the testimony of faith. At the same time, they make tawaf around the graves as if they're going around the Kaaba. Ahabatifillah, Islam is strange. And how strange is Ahlul Sunnah in so many lands, Muslim lands, and of course Min Bab al the non-Muslim lands. How many people attack Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah and say they're Wahhabi? How many people attack Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah and say that they're extreme? 
How many people attack Ahlul Sunnah Tibul Jama'ah say they're the Ghulat and all kind of terminologies in reference to Ahlul Sunnah, it's because they've taken bid'ah as the norm. They've accepted un-Islamic practices as the norm, making the Sunnah seem strange. So whenever you see someone from Ahlul Sunnah, give them salams and you should have an increased love for them in your heart. And what did I say? I said an increased love in your heart because your love, al-wala wal-bara, loving and hating for the sake of Allah meaning you love, you have more love for someone in accordance with their adherence to the Sunnah of the Prophet and the further they're away from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then the further you are from them. So it's imperative Allah, that we try to revive the sunnah. And as one of those narrations mentioned that the one who fits the description of being those strangers or from amongst those strangers is the one who rectifies himself and rectifies others. So this shows us the importance of da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that, that da'wah Allah as Imam Muhammad ibn al Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, he said, I'lam rahimahullah innahu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al-ula al-ilm wa huwa ma'rafat Allah wa ma'rafat al-Nabi wa ma'rafat al-Din al-Islami bi yadilla al-thani al-amal bi al-thalath al-da'wah ilayh al-rabi al-sabr ala adhafi so he mentioned that there are four things he's, that every Muslim should know. He said, Al-Ula, the first thing is, is knowledge. And knowledge is knowing Allah and knowing His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and knowing, knowing the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. Then he mentioned the second point, and that's the shahid. That's the purpose of me mentioning his statement. He said the second is al amalubi is practicing it. So that's where the rectification comes. So we need our dua to khair our dua to sunnah to practice what they preach. We need our dua to khair, our dua to sunnah to lead the way and set the example for the youth, set the example for you and I so that we can follow them in that khair. We need them to be the ones who rectify the disputes. We don't need them at the forefront of the disputes and the forefront of fitna and the forefront of, uh, uh, forefront of, of, of ma'asi and sin. We don't need them to be the leaders of sin, we need them to be the leaders of khair. When charity comes about, when there's a need to, to spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to see their example. We need them to lead the call for raising the funds. And when the youth are in need of guidance and counseling, we need to see them in the forefront of calling the youth to guidance and counseling. And when we need the community to be going forth and, 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 and marching on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with durus, wal ilm, wa fiqh, we need the dua to al ilm dua to sunnah to be in the forefront calling the people to the book and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam those are the ghuraba those are the strange ones who we should give glad tidings to and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those strangers who Allah loves who Allah protects who Allah assists and support wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam